Hello everybody. I purchased three motherboards from eBay this week and this is the first of them. So this is labeled as XPS 9333, which is the model of Dell that this has come from. I think that's an i5 processor. It's a 4500U. So it's fourth generation and it's labeled as faulty. So I don't have the DC in jack for this, nor do I have the power adapter. However, I think most of these are 19.5 volts. So I'm going to take a look at this board, scan it to the screen, see if we can find out where to inject power. And then we're going to work on it together and see if we can get this back working again. So I've scanned the board in so that we can all get a good look at it. And we're going to start where we normally start at the DC in jack right here. So we have five pins on the DC in jack as you can see there is one two three four and five and this one is marked as five I did a quick check on the schematic and those pins are ground ground PSID that's the ID pin for the charger and we have our two DC ins on pins four and five I don't have the DC power jack and I don't have an AC power adapter for this. So how do I bring power to this laptop motherboard to test it? Well, what we can do is we can inject using the DC power supply. So let me show you how I set that up. To bring power to this motherboard, I introduce my power supply right here. I set it to 19.5 volts, which I've checked is the correct voltage for this motherboard. So where do we inject? Well, I was going to inject at these pins, but these are actually tiny and really awkward to solder into because there's a concern that you might brush the soldering iron off this component right here. But when you look in closer, you can see the DCN is connected to this inductor here. And as you can see, there's a small piece of solder here. So I'm going to solder my red wire straight onto this point here. Let's do that. And what about ground? Well, ground is everywhere, of course. So the easiest ground we can find is just at this point here. So let me show you how I connected that. So with those connected and with my power supply set to 19.5 volts, I found that the laptop motherboard started drawing 0.001 amps. A current draw of 0.001 amps or 1 milliamp seems a little low for a Dell laptop that is connected to power but not yet switched on. Usually we would expect this to be maybe 5 to 15 milliamps. But what I'm going to do is follow my 19.5 volts from the point of injection into the circuit and see if we can diagnose a fault. I've set it up here with a split screen of having my actual motherboard here on the left and our schematic on the right. Hopefully this makes it a little bit easier to follow along. So as you can see, we have component FL2. That's actually FL2, which corresponds to this component here. Now we can see on our schematic that we have DC in jack on pins four and five. That comes up to FL2, and it's actually after FL2 where we're injecting the voltage. After component FL2, we can see that our 19.5 volts comes along here and then it's relabeled as plus DC in. So let's find that further down the schematic. I found DC in further down the schematic and as you can see it comes across here and onto the next component which is PQ27. So let's locate that on our motherboard. And as you can see we have PQ27 right here. Now this is an N channel MOSFET and if I mark out the pins here you can see that we have four drain pins on one side and this is where our 19.5 volts comes in and we have three source pins and a gate pin on the other side. I've zoomed in so we can get a better look. So as you can see we have 19.5 volts coming into our drain pins on this side. So what should we expect to happen if this is working? Well this is an N channel MOSFET so our gate pin should be high usually about 24, 25 volts in order for this to be switched on and to allow our 19.5 volts through from our drain to our source. So I'm going to take a measurement of the voltage at the gate and a measurement of our voltage at the source pins. So introducing my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range, I place my black probe to our ground, which I'm getting here. And then with my red probe, I take a measurement at the gate pin. And I find that our gate pin measures 24.05 volts. 24.05 volts on our gate should switch this MOSFET on. So I would expect that we would find our 19.5 volts coming through from our drain to our source. So again, with my multimeter and volts DC, I take a measurement at the source pins and I find that it measures 19.50 volts. So after coming through our first MOSFET, where does our voltage go next? 
Well, as you can see, the source pins of this MOSFET are back to back with the source pins of a second MOSFET. So let's look at that in the schematic. We can see that we have PQ26. PQ26 is this MOSFET here, which is also an N-channel MOSFET. And if we look at that, we have three source pins here, a gate pin and four drain pins on the other side. And measuring in volts DC once again, I place my red probe to the gate pin of PQ26 and I find that it measures 24.05 volts. So having established that the gate pin of PQ26 is measuring 24.05 volts, this should switch the MOSFET on and we should also be measuring 19.50 volts on the drain pin of this MOSFET. So let's take a measurement there. So on the drain pins of this MOSFET, I measure 19.50 volts. Now you can see on our schematic here that after leaving PQ26 our 19.50 volts comes on to this component here which is PR201 and on our motherboard you can see PR201 which is this current sense resistor. So everything looks good up to this point. We have our 19.5 volts coming in here. It's passing through our two input MOSFETs and through our current sense resistor. So the next component we need to find and take measurements at is this one right here. This is our battery management IC. As you can see, it is PU12. So let's locate that on our motherboard. On the other side of the board, I found PU12, which is this IC right here. And I'm gonna mark in the pins so we can all see what's going on more clearly. I've made the schematic a little bit larger so we can see more clearly what's going on with PU12. Now we've already established that we have 19.5 volts coming in through PQ27, through PQ26 and onto this current sense resistor. This is essentially the input of 19.5 volts to this battery management IC. Now this battery management IC has a number of jobs. One of those is to generate a lower regulated voltage which powers all of the secondary circuits. On this battery management IC, that is PWR underscore SRC, as you can see right here. And we can measure that at pin 19. There is also another pin, pin 16, which as you can see here is reg N. This should produce an internal LDO of six volts if the battery management IC is working. So usually it's a good test to measure this. And if you measure six volts, on pin 16 of this IC, then it's a good indication that it's working. So back to our motherboard, let's take some measurements. Well, first of all, we're gonna introduce our multimeter in volts DC once again, place our black probe to ground down here and start taking some measurements. So the first thing I wanna measure is pin 16. This is our pin 16 where our internal LDO should be measuring six volts. If I place my probe carefully to pin 16, I find that it measures 6.04 volts. So it looks like our internal LDO is working and I'll deduce from that that my battery management IC is also working. Next, I wanna measure pin 19, which is phase. So placing my red probe very carefully to pin 19, I find that that measures 9.02 volts. So it looks like our system voltage, which on this motherboard is called PWR underscore SRC, is also online. And just in case it's of use to somebody, these are the rest of the voltages I measured around this IC. So having established that our main system voltage is online and it's reading 9.02 volts, what do we need to check next? Well, next we need to check our always on voltages. Even in standby, we should be getting a stable LDO voltage of 3.3 volts and a separate LDO voltage of five volts. Now on this motherboard, this is the IC here responsible for producing those two voltages. So you see PU7, and if we look at pin 15 here, it's LDO3. So that's 3.3 volts and LDO5 pin 14 is 5 volts. So let's find PU7 and see if we're measuring these two voltages. And here we have PU7, which is this IC. So let me mark in the pins so that we can follow it along a bit more clearly. So let's take some measurements. So the first thing I want to measure is V in. So we should be getting the system voltage of 9.02 volts on V in. Let's check for it. 
So I introduce my multimeter and volts DC in a 20 volt range, place my black probe to a ground, which I'm getting from the side of that capacitor, and place my probe to pin 11, which is V in, and I find that it measures 9.02 volts. So the IC is getting a good input voltage. Next, we need to measure our LDO voltages. So let's start with our 3 volt LDO, which is on pin 15. So place my red probe to pin 15, I find that it measures 3.28 volts. Next, I want to measure my 5 volts LDO, which is on pin 14. So placing my red probe to pin 14, I find that it measures 5.08 volts. So both of my LDO voltages, my always on voltages, are working perfectly. Now this IC is also responsible for generating a higher current 3.3 volts output and a higher current 5 volts output which are referred to as phase 1 on pin 17 and phase 2 on pin 9. So let's check for those voltages also. If I place my red probe to pin 17 I find that it measures 5.08 volts. So that 5 volts higher current output is also online. And measuring at pin 9, which is phase 2, I find that we have 3.28 volts. So it looks like this IC is working as well. It's given us our LDO voltages and it's given us our switched higher output voltages. The next thing we need to check is to find a power button, see if it's getting voltage, and then check what happens when we push the power button to power it on. Now I found this switch here, SW1, which certainly looks like a power switch, however it's not. I checked the laptop and this is actually a battery indicator switch. When you press this, when you have a fully functional laptop, the LEDs light up on this to indicate how much battery you have left, believe it or not. But this is not the power switch. So having established that SW1 was not in fact the power switch, I checked the schematic to see if I could find out where the power switch actually did come into this motherboard. And on CN3, pin 20, you can see here we have power underscore SW underscore IN0 hash. Now this is actually where the power switch signal comes in. So let's find pin 20 of CN3, measure it, see if it measures you know, 3 volts are close enough to it. And if we find 3 volts there, let's ground it to simulate the power button being pressed and see if this comes on. And this is CN3. As you can see, it's right beside where we're injecting our voltage. So if we count up these pins and mark them in, we see that pin number 20 is right here. And when I measured on pin 20, I found that we had 3.28 volts. So we're getting the correct signal, the correct voltage on pin 20. To simulate the power button being pressed, we need to temporarily ground pin 20. So what I did was, with my tweezers, I connected pin 20 to ground, and that simulated the power button being pressed. And when I did that, the laptop started drawing more current. So after I triggered the power switch to come on with the tweezers, the current draw changed from 0.001 amps to 0.389 amps. I touched around the motherboard and I could feel that the processor was warming up. So I connected a monitor to the mini display port connection, but I could not get any display. So it looks like we have yet another one of these power on but no display situations. So with a power on but no display situation, what can we check for? Well, the first thing I wanted to check for was to make sure that we had no short on any of our secondary power rails. So what I did was switch off all power to the board, put my multimeter into diode mode, and here are all of the readings that I took in diode mode at all of the inductors. Uh, on PL8, I measured 0.38 volts. On PL2, I measured 0.41 volts. On PL5, 0.44. On PL6, 0.204. On PL7, 0.502. On PL4, 0.114. PL1, I think, 0.30. And PL3, 0.04 volts. So it looks like we don't have a short on any of the secondary power rails. So I connect my 
motherboard to power again, pressed the power button to power it on and checked all the voltages at those same secondary inductors. At PL8 I measured 1.78 volts, so this is our 1.8 volt rail. At PL2 I measured 9.02 volts, so that's our main uh, sys power rail. At PL5 I measured 5.06 volts. At PL6 I measured 3.26 volts. At PL7 I measured 9.02 volts. At PL4 I measured 0 volts, but this is for the battery and I don't have a battery connected, so all bets are off with that one. PL1 I measured 1.05 volts. Um, at our memory, I couldn't find an inductor here, but I measured at the capacitors and I measured 1.349 volts, which is essentially 1.35 volts, which we'd expect for this type of RAM. And at PL3, I measured 1.73 volts. This seemed a little unusual, but I checked our schematic and that's actually meant to be 1.7 volts. So all of our secondary voltages look like they're online. So what did I do next? Well, I cleaned down the board with some alcohol and a toothbrush, and that made no difference. I unplugged the bias battery, left it for a long period of time, put the battery back in, that made no difference either. And I also checked it with the terminal camera when the laptop was powered on. I couldn't see anything that was heating up other than the processor. Now I'm sure at this stage there's a number of you watching this saying, just flash the bias. So I tried to source a bias ROM for this and when I looked on badcaps.net I found Dell XPS 13 DAD 13 CMBAG 0 revision G and this was a ROM. So as you can see DAD 1 3 CMBAG 0 revision G. I took down that ROM file, flashed the bias on this motherboard and I'm going to show you what happened. So after flashing the bias, we still don't have any display. I also tried pushing down on the memory because I've seen that little trick before, but I just cannot get a display out of this. So that's where I got to leave it for this week, guys. Unfortunately, it's a no fix. We have a power on, but we still have no display.